Hey all, hope you're well. Rob here. I'm in this beautiful city of Cologne in Germany, which is where Radon's HQ is, and I'm here to test out the Radon render. This one here is the 10 HD, full on spec. So in this video, I'm gonna ride the bike, get into a bit more detail, and let you know what I think. Could this be the best value e-mountain bike ever made? This one's priced at around £5,600 and it comes with carbon frame, Fox factory suspension, SRAM, axis, wireless shifting, the 2020 Bosch Generation 4 motor and a 625 watt hour battery. The frame's got 140mm rear travel and this one's paired with a 160mm fork. It rolls on 29 inch wheels and its finishing kit is made up of top tier components. Its geometry is targeted towards trail and enduro riding and it weighs around 22 kilograms. So all of that sounds great so far. Great spec, attractive price, looks good, but what's it like to ride and how does it actually perform on the trails? Radon invited me over to their hometown to take a look at the bike and ride it on some of their trails. Now the bike I ride is a pre-production frame colour in white but it's exactly the same as the spec you see here. And we went out and hit some of the wet and slippery trails of Cologne. Firstly, the bike feels solid. It feels well put together and has a decent suspension kinematic. I felt at home on it quite quickly. I was riding the XL size bike and I'm 191 centimeters and I just about fit. I usually prefer a longer reach. I've got a long torso compared to legs, but I could manage this. It's just a shame that Radon don't make an XXL version for taller riders or those that prefer a longer reach. That being said, the bike handled very well and I adjusted quite quickly. The Bosch system is a good all-round package, powerful enough with a decent size 625 watt hour battery. There are four models in the range and there are a few similarities between them. All of the frames are carbon front and aluminium rear across all of the range. So from the three and a half thousand pound one up to the five and a half thousand pound, they all share exactly the same frame, same rear triangle, same battery and same motor. So this has got the Bosch 625 watt hour battery in there. I'll show you that in a minute. Bosch generation four CX motor, which is pretty good, pretty good performer. Actually, it came out for 2020. So this cover here, it's a rubber cover, a very hard rubber, and it dampens any stones and crap hitting the down tube. It protects the battery. It's secured on by this Allen bolt here and uh, it kind of clips in and this is just a retaining strap. It doesn't hold the battery in. The battery is very well secured in. I'll show you that in a minute. Fox factory on this model, 36. DT Swiss rims, I've used these DT Swiss rims for a while. They're brilliant, they're really hardcore. They can take a beat in, they're perfect for e-bike. Tanwall Maxxis DHF and DHR. DPX2 shock with a little piggyback and Magura brakes. These Magura brakes are just monstrous and it's got 220 mil rotor on the front and the stopping power is incredible. One finger braking, you've got to be careful because when these are properly bedded in, you can just lock up this front wheel. So much braking power. As I got to know the bike a little bit better over the few days of riding it, it was clear to me that Radon have created something pretty remarkable here. A decent bike at an attractive price. And I started to trust it more and more and push it until my skill levels ran out. The geometry on the bike is pretty conservative, but it's not a bad thing for a lot of riders. The chainstay is fairly long at 458 mil, but that helps the bike to climb really well without having to position your body so far over the front. The bike felt stable enough at speed on these trails that I rode it on. I was also quite impressed with the balance of the bike. I found myself trusting it on these narrower, slightly technical 
slow, wet, rooty sections. The model I'm riding uses the longer fork at 160mm travel, whereas all the others use a 150. If I purchase the shorter travel model, I'll be looking at changing out that damper to bring it back up to 160. It slackens out the head angle and I'd take that with the extra travel. The Bosch Generation 4 motor and battery combo is a good performer. I used it mostly in EMTB mode, which gives a quick response to your pedaling input. The Bosch motor unfortunately still makes a rattling sound on more rocky and rooty fast sections. I've heard this on every single Bosch bike I've tested, so it's not exclusive to this bike. It's not bad, but it's there and once you notice it, you can always hear it. But don't let it put you off. It sounds a bit worse on this GoPro microphone, but it's there on 100% of the Bosch bikes I've tested battery is removed if you want to charge it it's this here and all this is is like a retaining strap for this down tube cover and you pull it up first and then you pull it down and this is the Bosch 625 battery secured in with a key so it's locked in uh, personally I'm not a massive fan of bike keys but all the Bosch bikes seem to have them and that's really secured in and you just unlock it there. I won't take the battery out because it's pretty straightforward, but you can see it will just release there and the battery will come out. And this rubber plate, just a cover really, so it's not holding the battery in. I was a little bit concerned about that when I saw it in the kind of press pictures. I thought, oh, that just looks a bit insecure, but you can see that all that's going to do is hold that in place. It's already kind of clipped in when you move it down, it kind of has a prong on it and it just secures into the frame. To charging it on bike is here. So, so far, so good. But there are a few things that I noticed that gave the bike away that it was built to a price. Nothing in any way serious, but some things that I want to point out. I don't think this is the, it's a bit, it's not the best battery cover. It's better than some that I've seen on the Bosch bikes. I've got like a little rubber bung that you just put in and this is better, but it's still, it's still a little bit kind of flimsy. I think that could be improved there. And the controller, the Bosch controller, it's kind of wound round. Again, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of how that's done. I just think that this can be, there's, there's got to be a better solution than winding it round, even if it's in the bars like we're seeing on some bikes. Cable integration, it's all integrated into the frame. However, I have noticed that the dropper, because of the rear linkage, how they've designed that does kind of come out here. So it's not like 100% internally rooted. It'd be nice to see that on a future model. I mean, I'm really kind of picking here, but to see that fully integrated. Speed sensor cable is mounted just under the chainstay and magnet on the rear just there. And yeah, I'm being really picky here, but the speed sensor magnet came loose on one of the rides, meaning that the motor didn't work until I repositioned it. A couple of spec changes I'd like to see, a 170mm dropper on an XL, and probably a stickier tyre. The tan wall tyre is only available in a hard compound, and I'd prefer a softer compound. But these are all minor niggles, and in the grand scheme of things, this is a very, very good bike at an outstanding price. Bosch displays mounted there, which is quite neat. SRAM axis shift in, so wireless shift in with the Eagle 12 speed. And it works quite cool. I'm not the biggest fan of the lever, the shift in lever. Again, if you're not used to it, you have to think about it a little bit when you're shifting, but the wireless shift in is really good. It's really crisp and very, very quick. Bosch's control, I'm not, it's not the most ergonomic. There's one, two, three, four, five buttons on there and another one up there. So when you're just burning along, you're kind of like, mm, it's not the best. It works, it's functional, but still Bosch, I think, could, could make a better remote brakes. They're just brilliant stoppers. They're just fantastic. And it's good to see the MT7s on this bike. I think the entry level has um, Magura brakes, the MT trails. So yeah, 220 rotor at the front, 200 at the back. Um, Fox transfer dropper. Look at it, in this light, it really pops, that gray and black. So the bike isn't perfect, but to be honest, no bike ever is. But at this price, 
with this performance and considering you can get the entry level model which has the exact same frame, same motor and battery for around £3,500 it's a bike that has to be up there high on the purchase list. In fact there are bikes out there that will be double the price of this and honestly you won't be getting that much more for your money. We're only in February but this is looking like it could be the bargain e-bike of the year. So although I've been riding the 10 HD which is the most expensive model in the lineup. I wanted to share with you this one. This is the 9, Radon uh, Render 9, and it's 4,799 euros, which works out around 4,160 pounds with shipping to the UK. And I think this is the best bang for buck in the range. It's got Fox 36, DPX2 shock with a little piggyback reservoir, DT Swiss wheels, XT and SLX drivetrain, Magura brakes, and for that kind of money, it's still got the 625 watt hour battery, the Bosch Gen 4 motor, carbon frame, aluminium rear triangle. It's pretty outstanding. I think like if you're looking for an e-bike right now, this is just an outstanding option. And it's always good to see behind the scenes at bike companies. Radon are actually a very small team and it felt more like a boutique bike brand at their HQ rather than a big corporation. In fact, this is pretty much all of the team that work at Radon and bring the bikes to market. So a massive congratulations to Radon for bringing out this to the market. I mean, it's it's a very, very capable e-mountain bike and the price is, I keep banging on about the price, it's outstanding. If you're looking for an electric mountain bike for 2020, this is one that I will be recommending to friends and family because it's just up there in terms of the looks, the performance, the kit that you get with it. It is direct to consumer, so you can't go into a bike shop and test it out. It's sent directly from Radon, and I think it's about 40 to 50 pounds, so it's quite expensive to get it shipped over. But it's assembled there, you just need to put the bars and the stuff on, it's pretty straightforward. And if there is an issue, you can't go straight back to the bike shop, you've got to work out what the problem is and probably take it to a Bosch service centre if it's uh, an electrical problem. But there are quite a lot of them around, There's in fact, there's hundreds of them, so I wouldn't be too worried about that at all, especially since this new Bosch motor's been out. I've not heard, I don't think I've heard anyone that's had an issue with it. I, I can't remember seeing anything on EMTB forums. Let me know if you've had any issues with a new Bosch one, but I think it's pretty reliable. So, where does it go on the e-bometer? So in terms of value, it is, it is off the chart in terms of value. And how does it make you feel? It's a good bike, it's a solid bike, it's got the good ba big battery, 625 watt hour battery, decent motor, just a good overall package and I think it looks really good as well. So I'm going to put it like, uh, it's, it's up here man, it's, it's high, it's, it's, it's a very very sorted electric mountain bike with a couple of niggles that you've seen in the film but at the price from three and a half grand it's, 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 a, it's outstanding. It's an outstanding electric mountain bike. Hope you like the video. Let me know any comments below and I'll try and answer them for you. And if you like this stuff, subscribe. I bring out weekly electric mountain bike content. And until next time, I'll see you soon.